Okay, in this video I want to create a, an enemy spawn system using a bunch of C-sharp code and also referencing and some guides and stuff like that. So I want to show you guys how to do this. Now your guides and reference points are very, very important. For example, this is a trigger when the enemy runs into this, the uh, enemy's instantiated here. So let me just show you guys. Uh, let's play the game. Let's say I'm going to run into the trigger and boom, the, our enemy, in this case it's just a cube, <laughs> alright guys, just, so just to get my point across um, it's created at the spawn point, so uh, we can move this um, reference where, wherever you want and the enemy will get created there, so let me just prove my point, so the enemy will be created there boom, enemy spawned there, so the C sharp uh, re references uh, this object gets its position and rotation and that's where the enemy spawn so and we've made a nice reference or guide for the developer so again we can't see any guides and stuff so that's really important when your game gets a bit more complex so uh, okay so let's open the project we were working on in the previous video Mountainside YouTube and um, this is these are the textures guys just a warning icon and uh, enemy one uh, transparent PNGs create any icon you like google some stuff or create it yourself you know um, so the first thing I want to do actually is tidy up my uh, project folder so I'm going to create a new folder and call it prefabs oh, I want it to be in my root let's just put these in the prefabs Okay, uh, the first thing I want to do is make another prefab actually and um, call it enemy. So let's make our enemy first. So our enemy is just going to be a cube in this case. If we can see it, and let's just make a material for our enemy. Enemy 1, just make it red. Let's just drag it on the enemy prefab. Sort it quick and easy. I uh, can delete that out now. Unity doesn't blah, 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 blah. not important and um okay that's our first thing we need to do. Uh, and let's create the spawn point now. So I'm just gonna create another cube again and I want the enemy to spawn somewhere around there so that, so it can fall down the mountain. Alright. <laughs> um so you can make it a bit bigger so this is just a reference guys, so the enemy will spawn at this point here where the pivot point's uh, origin is but this cube's just a reference. We don't need the box collider for the texture, let's put the enemy 1 on there and let's create it, uh, let's give it a transparent vertex lit and the reason I did that was so I can uh, make it emit light so we can see it a bit easier so let's just give it a blue maybe okay so we can see it easier now purely for the developer so let's put it in the guides layer so we don't see it um, if you didn't watch my other video guys uh, let me just show you something um, my player if we go to the main camera where is it there it is and go to culling mask we can specify layers we want to show and we want to hide so I've, I want to see every layer apart from the guides layer that's how we set that up okay so that's that. Um, let's rename this enemy one spawn. And I think that's all set up now. So let's move on. Let's do the trigger now. So the trigger is going to go about here. Create other. Let's create another cube again. And um, let's move it into position. I just want it to just before the lake. Let's go into perspective again. Uh, move it up so we don't need the box collider actually um, and let's drag it right out like so okay that do I think I don't think an enemy can uh, the player can jump past that um, we don't even need a renderer to be oh yes we do, we need the guides so let's put in our guides layer um, another material let's call it trigger in this example and a transparent diffuse this time 
put the warning texture in there and drag it on alright guys so it looks a bit dodgy so let's create let's uh, edit these tiling values I'm gonna guess around 30 and 4 or 5 oh, I think 5 is alright to be honest so okay I do and um, the other thing we need I think I removed the box collider but we actually do need it I was gonna make a separate object but we can use the same object um, and it's going to be a trigger, All right, guys. So that's really important. If it wasn't a trigger, the enemy would just, uh, sorry, the player would just <laughs> bump into it. It wouldn't move. The trigger's meant to trigger something. Um, and we can also change the, the transparency a bit so it doesn't get in our way. Okay, so I tried doing this tutorial before, guys, and Unity crashed at this point. So let's hope it doesn't do it this time. Um, so let's move on to apply the um, the actual script. So we want to create a C sharp script now. So we want the player to trigger with this and uh, spawn the enemy. So let's double check everything's hidden. Firstly, yeah, everything's hidden. Create a C sharp. Let's call it. I oh know player triggers. Open it in Mono Develop. So in Mono Develop, we don't need these functions, so let's delete it out. Uh, Unity has its own built-in function for triggers, guys. So void on trigger enter, and it takes a collider. So col, let's call it whatever you want, but I call it col, nice and simple. Okay, first thing, guys, we need um, to reference the uh, enemy. So public game object enemy, we're going to instantiate it. Okay, so the first thing to do is to make a switch statement so this script's going to handle every single trigger uh, that the player collides with so we can switch any objects we want so all we need to do is col dot game object dot name that's what we're going to switch so case remember to use double quotes guys single ones will flag an error so what did we call it we called it enemy one uh, that's why enemy one trigger so when we collide with this, we want stuff to happen. The first thing we want to happen is to debug it to make sure it's actually happening. Uh, collided with enemy one spawn trigger. Let's say that. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is to destroy this object because we don't want it to happen again. So destroy. Um, the game object we collided with, so cold dot game object. Okay, let's close this gap. Actually, make things a bit easier. Um, so we want to create a, uh, we want to instantiate the enemy, and to do that, guys, we need to create a new object. So let's call it a transform, an enemy. All right. So, and we also need another game object. We need to refer to the spawn point, so we can refer to its position and rotation. So game object. Let's call it enemy. Spawn spawn point um, and we can say game object dot find we can find any object in the scene and I believe it was called enemy one spawn yeah that's the one there it is guys so that's where the enemy's going to spawn um, close that and uh, that's it guys now we need to instantiate it um, instantiate we want to instantiate uh, this enemy we attach to the script so enemy I'll spell it right, and its position is this enemy spawn point dot transform position, and its rotation is the same enemy spawn point transform rotation. All right, and we want to cast it as a transform. We want it to be a transform because we want to store it as a transform. Um, Casting is pretty easy, guys. You just call it uh, what what type you want it to be. So that's all we need to do actually break it out and let's see if it works so let's find our enemy uh, before I do guys um, there it is let's jump into our prefabs drag the enemy onto our script player drag it on okay so I think I forgot to do something with the enemy I want to give it a rigid body so it falls down rather than just floats in the air so let's give it a component rigid body 
Okay, save it out. And let's see if it works. So run into the trigger. Boom, em enemies uh, spawned in the point. Let's look in our scene. And our trigger's no longer there, so it's been deleted as well. So And the enemy has been instantiated there. So that's it, guys. Simple as that. Uh, we could have just made a little script to instantiate it, but we've gone a bit further than that. We've used references so we can see where our trigger is and where the actual spawn point is. And rather than hard coding the spawn point, we've referred to a game object so we can drag it anywhere in the scene. Like in the middle here, for example, just to reiterate this and uh, spawn it wherever you want. So a lot easier to do. Um, and that's it for this video. So in the next video, I'm going to continue building out this properly. So I'll delete this stuff for now. So um, really handy to do, especially uh, for first person games. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully see you in the next video.